Hello there and uh, welcome back. In this video I am going to introduce you with a uh, top e bar component in a material tree. Now even though the topic of this video uh, may sound boring, I highly suggest you to watch this video until the end because uh, there are some important changes that uh, were introduced with this uh, new material tree design. Now first uh, let's start with the types. So uh, with a material tree, a uh, top e bar component uh, now has uh, four different types. And uh, each one of those uh, four different types has its uh, own composable function as well. Now from this documentation right here, uh, you can see that we have a, a center aligned, small, medium and large uh, top e bar. Now uh, with the newest uh, Compose Material uh, library, this uh, small uh, top e bar is uh, renamed to a regular top e bar. And uh, here down below we can also see some more important uh, information about this uh, top e bar. So now it says that uh, with a top e bar we no longer have a drop shadow. Instead we use a color fill to separate uh, our actual uh, top e bar from the rest of the content. Also, the actual title of this uh, top e bar is now a little bit uh, larger than before. So from here you can see that uh, in the previous material too, our uh, top bar actually contained uh, a shadow or a drop shadow. However, now with the material tree, we don't have any shadow because its elevation is now represented through the color. And that's what we call a uh, tonal elevation. We can also check the specifications of this uh, component and you will see that the actual elevation of our top e bar is uh, zero. However, the elevation on scroll is uh, level 2. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it means that by default, the actual container color of our uh, top e bar will be the same as the surface color. However, whenever we scroll, uh, for example, through our list uh, in that uh, same screen, uh, then the elevation of our uh, top e bar uh, should change. Now I'm going to show you how to achieve that uh, effect a little bit later in this video. For now let me just uh, open up this elevation uh, documentation and show you that uh, there are actually six different elevation levels in a material tree. So we have here level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. And we can see uh, the actual uh, elevation values for each one of those levels as well. Alright, so now let's uh, finally open up the Android Studio. So here I have already created one project that uses uh, Compose Material 3 template. And here by default we already have this Compose Material 3 dependency as well. Now uh, let's open up this uh, main screen and here I'm going to create a simple scaffold. And uh, inside this uh, scaffold let's specify first uh, a top bar and the content here as well. So you'll see that uh, here we have now warnings. So uh, this uh, Material 3 scaffold requires this um, experimental Material 3 annotation. So let's just specify that annotation right here. And we also have uh, one annotation or warning here actually uh, about the padding. So let's just uh, use this uh, unused Material 3 scaffold padding parameter uh, on our uh, composable function as well. There we go. So now in this uh, top bar, uh, let's uh, call a uh, top e bar composable function. So you will see that now we have uh, various different uh, types of uh, composable functions, like a uh, top e bar, and this composable function actually represents that uh, old uh, small uh, top e bar. So that uh, small top e bar is now called uh, just a uh, top e bar. Uh, then we have a center aligned uh, top e bar. We have a large and medium as well. So in this case I'm going to just uh, use this uh, regular top e bar, there we go. So uh, here as a first parameter we can specify maybe a uh, navigation icon. And here I'm going to just paste a simple icon. There we go. And now as a second parameter to this uh, top e bar I'm going to call here a title. And we can just uh, call a simple text and specify here uh, some kind of a string that says for example home. Alright, so now let's try and run this application so we can see how this uh, top e bar uh, will actually look like. So now, uh, whenever we run this application, you will see that a default color of this uh, top e bar is the same as a surface color, which is now normal. So now with a Material 3 design system, a uh, top e bar uh, background color uh, should be changed only if we scroll some kind of a list on that uh, same screen. And I'm going to show you how to implement that uh, logic uh, in a moment. But before that, uh, one important thing here to note is that uh, with Material 3 we no longer use a term of a background color and now we use a term uh, which is called a container color instead. So even though I said that the container color of this uh, top e bar uh, should be changed dynamically when we actually scroll some kind of a list uh, on that screen, 
Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, we cannot change or apply a new color to the top bar. Quite the opposite, we can. But we should use a, a tonal elevation instead of the regular color. So let me show you. Uh, here this uh, top app bar contains also one more parameter which is called uh, colors. And here we can just uh, call uh, a top uh, app bar defaults. And then we can call here a small top app bar colors. This composable should change its name in the future to just uh, top app bar colors. But nevertheless, let's just call this function. And here we can specify uh, many different colors. But uh, as I already mentioned, uh, for now let's just specify here a, a container color. Now here, instead of specifying uh, the exact uh, color as a parameter, I'm going to use a different approach. So I'm going to specify here the actual tonal elevation. So here I'm going to call material theme, then a color schema. And here I'm going to call one function, uh, which is called, let me just see, uh, surface color at elevation, right? So here as an elevation, I'm going to specify a 3dp, right? For example, uh, the elevation of a 3dp, and if you check the actual documentation, you will see that uh, a 3dp represents a level 2 uh, elevation, right? So now let's run this uh, application and let's see whether the color of this uh, top app bar will change. And there you go. So now the content color of this um, uh, top app bar has been changed. But now uh, you might be wondering uh, what is this uh, actual color that we are seeing right here? Well, uh, that color is actually a primary color. But the opacity level of this uh, primary color is uh, quite low. So let me open up the official documentation and show you. So uh, here you will see that uh, basically whenever we apply the elevation uh, to one of those uh, components, for example the elevation of a level 1, uh, then the actual color of that component to which we apply that elevation will have only a 5% opacity of the primary color, right? In other case, when we apply a level 2 elevation to some component, uh, then that component will receive a color primary but with only 8% of the opacity of that color. And when we apply, for example, a level 3 elevation, uh, then the opacity uh, will actually increase to 11%. And with a level 4 and 5, the actual opacity level of the primary color uh, will increase to a 12%. And that's why we are seeing here uh, that color, which actually represents a primary color, right? We can also try to change, for example, the theme uh, of this uh, actual uh, smartphone device. And you will see that those colors will also change. All right, let's just go back here. So uh, the next uh, important thing that uh, I want to mention about uh, top air bar and the scaffold in general is the padding. And this uh, may look confusing the first time you add this uh, new Material 3 top air bar. So uh, let's try, for example, and add some kind of an element or a lazy list actually in this uh, content parameter of the scaffold to see uh, what kind of a confusion we may encounter. So down below I'm going to paste one new composable function, which will just represent a lazy list. Alright, so here as you can see we have a new uh, composable function, which basically contains a lazy column. And to this uh, lazy column uh, we are passing uh, those numbers that we have stored in this list. Right? So now let's call this uh, custom list uh, as a content of our scaffold. So custom list. Now let's run this application and let's see uh, how will this actual custom list uh, look like with our uh, top a bar. So here as you can see uh, we are seeing this uh, number 2 but we don't see number 1. And where is that number 1? Uh, well that uh, number 1 is actually behind our top a bar. So how is that possible? Well it's possible and it's a default behavior. However uh, that's why we have here this uh, padding values parameter that we can use to uh, rearrange our content uh, composable function. So here we can just uh, add a new parameter to our uh, custom list, so a uh, padding of a type of a uh, padding values, right? Let's just pass here a uh, padding values equal to it. And here we can specify a new parameter to our lazy column. And we can add here a new padding on the top. And from this uh, padding values uh, parameter, we want to call this uh, calculate top padding function, which will basically allow us to, uh, to calculate the actual padding that we need to add to our lazy column in order to display our full composable right here. So now if you run this application, uh, then uh, our actual first item will be visible. So now here everything looks uh, perfectly fine and it works the way it should. So finally the last uh, thing that I want to show you here is uh, how to dynamically uh, change this uh, 
uh, top app bar uh, content color or the tonal elevation whenever we scroll some kind of a list on that screen. So uh, for now I'm going to disable this actual uh, colors parameter and uh, leave our top bar with that default uh, surface color, right? There we go. So now here uh, what we want to achieve, so whenever we uh, scroll this uh, list on this screen, uh, then we want to change or apply a new elevation level to this uh, actual top app bar. Because from that documentation you have already seen that uh, our top app bar component will have an elevation of a level 2 whenever we scroll a list, right? So uh, let me just here uh, go all the way here. I'm going to paste here uh, one variable uh, which is called um, uh, scroll behavior and here we are just calling this uh, top app bar defaults and this uh, pin scroll behavior uh, function, right? And this function will basically track this uh, nested scroll callback and it will update our uh, top app bar state accordingly. Now the next uh, thing we need to uh, add here one uh, modifier to our actual scaffold and that modifier is called a nested scroll and here we need to pass this uh, scroll behavior and it's a nested scroll connection uh, variable, right? So this uh, nested scroll connection will basically be attached to our nested scroll and it will keep the track of the scroll events. So whenever we uh, scroll through this list, uh, then we should notify this uh, scroll behavior and that uh, scroll behavior uh, needs to notify now our actual top app bar to change the elevation when we scroll, right? So the last uh, thing that we need to do here, we need to add just uh, one more parameter to now our uh, top app bar, right? So a scroll behavior. And now let's uh, finally uh, launch this uh, application. So we can see how the actual elevation of our uh, top app bar will immediately update whenever we scroll through this list. So now by default you will see that the actual uh, container color of our top app bar is the same as the surface, so it has a white color. However, if we now try to scroll this list, uh, then the actual elevation of this uh, top app bar will change, right? And whenever we scroll that back, then that elevation will also disappear. So only when we scroll this list, then that elevation will show up and the container color of this uh, top app bar will uh, automatically change and update as well. Alright, so uh, that's uh, everything I wanted to share with you about this uh, new uh, top app bar in a Material 3 design. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment down below. And uh, also be sure to like this video, but only if you find it helpful. For this video, that'll be all.